Greetings! Today we're going to be looking at AC Maximum Power Transfer Theorem. Very simple idea. Essentially, what load can we put uh, on a source to produce the maximum amount of power in that load? All right? So, for example, suppose we have a simple voltage source over here, and we'll say this. Uh, internal impedance is somewhat inductive, maybe 20 ohms resistive and 10 ohms inductive. Okay, so here is my source. And I'm going to say the source is 70 volts RMS. Now usually when we talk about power, the specification for voltages and currents is going to be RMS. That's an effective value, that's what we use for power calculations. All right, now the question is, if I hang some kind of load out here, all right, some Z load, I have a choice of anything I can put in there. The question is, what do I put in there to get the biggest possible power in that load? All right, well, before we dive too far in there, let's just take a very simple example. Maybe I use a purely resistive load, okay? We'll call this version one. Suppose our load is just 40 ohms. That's all, right? We've just got a 40 ohm resistive load, the end. How do we calculate the power in here, all right? Well, if that's a 40 ohm resistor, we basically have a simple series loop. And consequently, um, we could just use Ohm's law to find the current. Power law is I squared times R. So we'll be able to find the power in that 40 ohm resistor directly, right? So the current over here will simply be the source voltage divided by the total impedance in the circuit. So I've got 70 volts RMS divided by the 20 on the source plus the 40 on the load plus the J10, right? So I'm just drawing these out in rectangular form, basically keeping the reels with the reels. And when we um, do our math on this, the, the current will work out to 1.51 amps at an angle of negative 0.5 degrees. Okay. Oops. All right. Now, slight negative angle would make sense because the circuit does have some uh, inductive reactance in it. Now, take that current. That current's going to pass through our load, right? So with a positive polarity here, we're going to have current going like this. Um, I can just use the power law here. Power in the load will simply be I squared times R load. All right. So I can just use the magnitude of this. 1.151 amps squared times R load, 40 ohms. And we will come up with approximately 53 watts. All right. That's the power in there. Now, our question is, if I can put anything in here, right? 10 ohm resistor, uh, a 37 ohm resistor in the series with a, you know, minus J2 capacitor. I have anything I can put in there. What value, what combination, what Z value will give me the biggest possible power? Well, it turns out, you know, in the DC case, you might remember that we had to match the resistance values, right? There was no inductance, there was no uh, capacitance. And if we did that, we got maximum power. Um, we didn't get maximum voltage, we didn't get maximum current, but we did get a very large current, basically you got half the maximum, and we got a large voltage, again, half the maximum. And because those two things together, power equaling voltage times current, since those two things together are both very large, the product gives you the maximum value. Now things are a little bit different in the AC case, right? It turns out we don't want to exactly match this load with this internal impedance. That will, in fact, not get us the maximum current. And that's really what I'm going to look for here as far as sort of fiddling with um, my Z load. In other words, if I had a 20 and that was in series with a J10, that wouldn't give me as much current as if I had no inductance. Right? Because I would still use this same basic equation over here. All right? 
Um, in other words, I'm going to have the um, voltage source divided by whatever this impedance is plus this impedance. So if that was a 20 and a J10 and a 20 and a J10, I'd have a total of 40 plus J20. Right? Well, if I just dropped out the inductive part on here, it'd be 40 plus J10. I would get a bigger current. And the resistance value is the same, which means my calculation for power would give me a bigger value. So an exact match is not going to work. Right? How do I get that current a little bit bigger? I get that current a little bit bigger, again, not the maximum value, but for that value of resistance, it will be the maximum value, is if I use a complex conjugate. In other words, what I'm going to do in here is put in the same magnitude of reactance, but of the opposite sign. So, second version, we're going to use the complex conjugate. So that would be a resistor in series with a capacitor. So that resistance value is going to match, 20 ohms. The capacitive reactants will be the same size, right? but it's obviously negative, so I've got a minus J10. All right? Now, when we figure out our current, it's still E over Z. Still 70 volts. But now look at what you have, right? You got a 20 plus this 20 plus this J10 plus this negative J10, right? Well, these two guys cancel out. And what we're left with is 70 volts RMS sitting over 40 ohms, all right? That's going to give us 1 and 3 quarters amps at an angle of zero. All right, so it's purely resistive in this case, right? The inductive and the capacitive parts completely cancel. The circuit's purely resistive. Remember, only resistors dissipate power, true power. So I'm now going to take this 1.75 amps, just like I did before. I'm going to pass that through the resistive part. Right? I don't want to pass that through the resistor plus the inductor. In other words, I don't want to say I squared times ZL. I don't want to say I squared times 20 minus J10. I only want to look at the resistive part, right? Only the resistors produce true power. So the power in the load here is going to be I squared times RL again, right? Not ZL, RL. And that's going to be 1.75 amps squared times that 20 ohms. And that is going to get us 61 and a quarter watts, right? What this theorem is telling us, essentially, is there's nothing else you can put in here that's going to give you anything bigger than 61 and a quarter. That's the max. That's the maximum power transfer, okay? I'm going to get 61 and a quarter watts in that load, right? Now, a couple of little side things to note here. When you have this situation, when you have the complex conjugate, and the capacitive and inductive parts cancel out, right? And it wouldn't matter which orientation you happen to be in. In other words, if this is capacitive, then you'd have to have an inductor over here, okay? As long as it's the opposite sign, right? Um, you have this pure resistive effect, then the load voltage would have to split evenly between this internal resistance and the resistive portion of Z load, right? These two things are basically going to cancel out. In other words, the inductor and the capacitor. So basically we just have a, you could think of it as a voltage divider between the 20 and the 20 here. Consequently, your power can also be computed in terms of just splitting that voltage. In other words, your load power is also going to be equal to this voltage source E divided by 2, right? Half here, half here. Take that, square it, divide by the load resistance, right? So in other words, I would take 35, right, 70 divided by 2, 35 squared uh, divided by the 20 ohms, and once again, we'll come up with 61 and a quarter watts, right? Now, again, that gives us maximum power. That doesn't mean we always want to have maximum power. There is uh, an issue with this. Basically, the issue is efficiency. When we have this case, when we have the complex conjugate for the load, we wind up with a similar situation that we had in DC. In other words, you're going to lose 
half of the generated power in the generator, okay? Remember, this resistor and this resistor are the same size, right? There's your 20 and there's your 20. So, you know, whatever you have, for example, 61 and a quarter, well, there's 61 and a quarter dissipated back here too, all right? So, um, you're only getting 50% 50, 50 of what's actually being produced, okay, what's being generated. If we were to go to a higher load value, your total power would decrease, okay? In other words, if we had like 30 ohms here or 50 ohms here or something like that, um, regardless of, you know, what we have for the capacitor, um, we're going to get less power. There's no question about that, right? This is the maximum value. It doesn't get any bigger than this. On the other hand, if we look at it in terms of total power that's being generated, we're going to get a larger share of that, okay? If we went the other way, in other words, if this resistor um, was smaller, you know, if this was like 5 ohms or 3 ohms or something like that, we'd have less power, but we'd also have an even smaller percentage of the total power. So that would be the, the worst of both situations, okay? We don't have maximum power, and we're just generating a lot of power that's turning up internally, okay? Now, you know, this could be a, a literal generator and a power generator, but this model could also work for something like, let's say, an amplifier. Um, you know, the load would be something like a loudspeaker. Well, if I have a really lousy match here, what ends up happening is this would represent heat inside the amplifier, okay? So in the case of an audio amplifier, I probably don't want maximum power transfer because if I'm generating 100 watts into a loudspeaker, that means that this situation, I'd also be dissipating 100 watts inside the amplifier. In other words, the transistors and so forth are getting hot, right? I don't want to do that. Um, heat is worst enemy of, of semiconductors. So in a case like that, we would probably opt for something that um, wasn't the maximum power but was much more efficient, right? So we have a trade-off between those two things. As that um, load impedance gets um, smaller and smaller or larger and larger, as it moves off of that um, desired value, that, that uh, complex conjugate, we get less and less power. But if we at least go on the high side, the efficiency will go up, right? So you could think of a little plot here like this. Okay, so if this was my load impedance, or at least the resistive part of it, and I were to look at the efficiency. So here we are where we have a, the, the complex conjugate. I'll just say it's right here. Okay. Um, so that efficiency is 50%. Right? That's our operating. So if I go to a larger resistance, the power is going to fall off, but the efficiency will actually go up. So we'll get something that kind of goes like that. All right. Your power, on the other hand, I'll do that on axis over here. Right, I'll just cheat a little bit. The power, however, is doing something like this. Okay? So it peaks there, falls off on either end. So like I said, you got something down here. Oh, that's double bad. You're, um, you're getting lousy efficiency, and you're not getting much power. Okay? So the take-home message is you want maximum power transfer, right? You want to get as much as possible into that load. And we want that load to be the complex conjugate of the internal impedance, meaning the resistive part is the same size. And the reactive part is the same magnitude, but of the opposite sign. And there you have it.